Please join me in welcoming my good friend and tonight's keynote speaker, Adam Newman. Shalom. Thank you so much for having me here. And this is an amazing event. You know, I heard a few miracles as I was listening. We talked about when we started in the Bronx. We talked about a few different people shared about the miracles in their lives. We're right after the eighth day of Hanukkah, which is the holiday of miracles and my favorite study of Hanukkah. In life, it's not about being afraid of our shortcomings. It's about having the courage to fully live and be the full light that we can be. It's very scary to be all that you can be. And if each one of us actually allowed ourselves to be our fullest, there would be no stopping us. There would be peace on the world and Mashiach would be here. And with that, thank you. With that, thank you, Lloyd. You're an I've been having a great time getting to know you, and we've been having so much fun. You can ask Lloyd any question. We were having dinner, and I said, Lloyd, you have so much knowledge. Lloyd said, ask me anything. I said, Spanish Inquisition, go. And you said so many names and so many things I didn't even know existed. It was amazing. Amazing. I'm not even going to try. You know already so much I gave up before starting. I grew up in Israel, as you can hear from my accent. I grew up with no... Where's my timer? Because I'm going to overspeak. Keep going. I'm not going to know how long they told me I'm going to see it, but there's nothing here. You're going to tell me. I grew up in Israel, and growing up in Israel, for those of you who don't know, it's so obvious that you're Jewish, you don't respect it. Actually, everyone around you is Jewish, you think it's an obvious thing. So I actually didn't celebrate anything, not the holidays, not Shabbat, I ate on Yom Kippur. And it was really, I almost had a hatred, hatred towards religion because you want to go to the beach in Israel on Saturday and there are no buses because it's partially a religious state. And you get very upset at the religious friends that make that happen. You go to the army and your religious colleagues don't serve in the army and you say, but why do I have to protect your kids? It's not fair, why are you not serving? And you almost have a hatred towards religion. Only when I moved to New York and started getting far away from Israel and far away from being surrounded by so many Jews, did my heart start craving being Jewish. Saying that, I moved to New York uh, right after my sister, who was a supermodel at the time, and I, I moved to live, actually shared an apartment with her, and for six years, we partied hard and did everything that the city knows how to do, and every party I went to and every person I met, I got a little bit more sad and a little bit more empty, until at the age of 28, I luckily met my then-girlfriend, um, today wife, Rebecca, and within three minutes of our first meeting, she looks at me and she goes, you have a lot of potential, but, you, but you're full of shit. <laughs> and I, sa I said, wait, 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 we just met. Don't you know who I am? Look at and I said, how do you know? How do you know? And she said, you know what? You're, you're coming to a first date, right? And I said, I am. And she said, you're all sweaty. What do you come here on your bicycle? And I said, I actually did come here on my bicycle. I'm an entrepreneur and I'm saving money. She said, uh, as I said, you, you talk this big talk, you, you're broke. I said, you don't know that I'm broke. And she said, yes, I do. I can tell. Anybody who talks about money doesn't have any. And, <laughs> and, and, she, said, and she, 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 I said, it's not that. You don't understand. I have a baby clothing company. You said horrible ideas. It's called Crawlers for Babies in Motion. And with a tagline, just because they don't tell, they don't tell you doesn't mean they don't hurt. It did, not, it did not work out at all. <laughs> it did not work out at all. I have five kids, thank God, today, and they never complained when they were crawling about their knees, so it was really a st <laughs> stupid idea. So I turned to Rebecca, and, and, and she looks at me, and the first time someone talked to me that way, and she said to me, you know what your problem is? You don't understand the game of life. And I said, the game of life? Of course I do. She said, prove it. What does success mean? I said, success is whoever dies the oldest with the most money. She looked at me and said, exactly. You do not understand the game of life. And I was so intrigued. I said, well, why don't you tell me what success means? She said, success is the person who at their 80s is surrounded by the most loved ones, the most family members, has created the most impact on this planet, has connected to something greater than themselves, and don't forget, had a great time doing it. I was so blown away by that, that I immediately did two things. One, I proposed within 30 days, even though we just met, and that was the best decision I made in my life. 
And two, I decided that I'm going to explore this uh, spiritual practice called the game of life. And as I started exploring it, as I learned more and more, I, uh, I started getting closer to my Judaism. And Rebecca and I learned very quickly that we have a lineage and heritage that's ours. And even though there are many different practices on this planet, and we do not discriminate between any of them, for us, being Jewish was the one that we connected to. And as we started and we had our first child and we also started the business together and as we work was growing and growing and we were taking more and more of the concepts of our spiritual studies and inputting them into the business, things worked better and better. Until one day, I think it was somewhere around the $5 billion valuation, I was cutting, I was, that's when trouble starts. I was catching myself, um, I was catching myself not being able to control my ego. And how do you know when you can control your ego? It's not the things you say, because we all learn how to keep quiet. It's the things you think. And when you start looking at people, and you're judging them, and to judge another person, you have to think you're better. And the moment you think you're better than another person, you can't help anyone, because no one wants to take advice from someone who comes from above. You want to take advice from someone who goes eye to eye, or maybe below, but definitely not from above. And as I could tell that I can't control my thoughts anymore, I realized I need a new practice. I need something even bigger, I went to my rabbi, you're sitting there, Rabbi Heller. Hey, rabbi Heller. And I said, Rabbi Heller, I need some help. I can't control my ego. I need, I need a tool. And Rabbi Heller said, you're not going to like my suggestion. I said, please tell me. He said, you should keep Shabbat. I said, Rabbi Heller, everything I say, you think I should keep Shabbat. Of course you're going to say I should keep Shabbat. He said, Adam, you asked me for a tool. I gave you a tool. You should keep Shabbat. So we believe in being students of life, for life. There's never a thing that I will not try at least one time in my life. I said, okay, I'll try Shabbat one time. It's not going to work, but I'll try it. And we do Shabbat together. I did it in Crown Heights. It was an unbelievable experience. For those of you who have never experienced Crown Heights on Shabbat, I recommend it warmly. And by the end of Shabbat, Rabbi Heller looked at me and he said, uh, you know, Adam, you did some real work this Shabbat. When your wife comes, she's going to look at you and she's going to say, I'm so impressed with you. I said, Rabbi Heller, until now, I really thought you knew everything, but my wife is never impressed with me. There's nothing I did that she's impressed with. She said, you're right, because all you did is material things. Now, she'll be impressed with you. Rebecca walks in at the end of Shabbat. She comes to pick me up from uh, Crown Heights, and she looks at me, and she goes, wow, I'm so impressed with you. I looked at Rabbi, I said, Rabbi Heller, did you call her? He said, yes, Adam, with my Shabbat phone, I called her. And... And the most amazing, amazing thing that happened to me is the next day I went to work and then it, it was Sunday and the next day Monday I went to work and suddenly the thoughts weren't coming up. I was looking at everyone around me and I could tell that we were all equals and we're on this together and God gives some of us more blessings than others and you can never judge or measure where other people are at because you never know where someone is coming from and where they're going. And for the whole week I was feeling really good until about Thursday when those thoughts started coming back again. And I was judging again and thinking this and thinking that. And I said, wow, the Shabbat thing is amazing, but it only lasts for about five days. <laughs> you gotta do it, you gotta do it again. And I, I went forward and I did, I did my next Shabbat that following Friday. And the most amazing thing is, in today's world, and it's never been more relevant than today, as technology takes over our lives, in average, a human being, we look at his phone 160 times a day. And I know Anthony guys invest in all of those businesses. I know it's good for business, but 160 times a day, that's once every six minutes. We're addicted to the phone. When we're going to get to be 80 or 90 and we're going to think of our life, we're going to think that a third of it we were sleeping and the other third we had a relationship with a machine. And that was not God's intention. That is not tikkun olam. And when you come to Shabbat and you disconnect from technology, and you connect to your children, and you connect to your wife or husband, and you connect to your loved ones and your friends, and you connect to something greater than yourself, you suddenly remember why we're here and what it is all about. And I have to tell you that never in our history, I think, was it more relevant. And as you see social media and companies, and without naming any names, there are so many problems around the planet today, and a lot of them have to do because of this addicted relationship between us and machines, and we're so connected We've never been more disconnected. I heard you speak before about loneliness and suicide, and you said that the young, to the young uh, Jews are having more mental problems than ever before. This is not just young Jews. The young millennials around this planet have never been in more pain. Loneliness have ne has never been greater. Suicide has never been greater. It's 100% because they're disconnected. When you're disconnected from your soul, when you're disconnected from the people around you, you cannot be happy, and you cannot be fulfilled. 
And as Rebecca and I were thinking about all of these things, we realized that if we really want to share this wisdom that we were so lucky to be born into, there's no better way to do it than through education. And a year and a half ago, Rebecca started a school called We Grow, and it was all about unleashing every child's superpower. But over the past year, as our kids have been going to the school, and it's been an unbelievable experience. And the truth about children, they all have a superpower. It's us as parents that get in the way. If, as parents, if we will get, if as parents, we won't tell her, you're going to be a lawyer, and you're going to be in Wall Street, and you're going to work in Goldman, and you're going to do this, and you're going to do that. If we got out of the way, then our children could actually be all that they can be. And the biggest gift we can give our children is to unleash their superpower. Because if we did that, they just might unleash ours. And I'm very excited to share that because it's been so meaningful for us and it's been working so well, thank God, we decided that starting next year, We Grow will offer a Jewish track. And the reason we want to offer a Jewish it's a big deal. It is a big deal. It is a big deal. And, and we live in a world that not everybody might accept that. And some would say, why are you doing that? And why are you forcing? And, and we're not forcing anything. We're offering it to anyone who wants to study, Jew or non-Jew. But for us to enjoy our lineage, to enjoy our heritage, we couldn't be more proud than to be who we are. I don't believe that I could be standing here if I was born anywhere else or in any other way. I know as a fact that there's no other country except for actually this country where an Israeli kid can come and come up with an idea and meet an amazing wife and meet an amazing rabbi and gain a practice and gain a study, build a business, have a life that couldn't be imagined anywhere else on this planet. And one of the reasons that when you, Jay, asked, and Lloyd, when you asked me to speak, and I try to speak as little as possible these days because between five kids and a growing business, there's not a lot of time left. I looked up the organization, and I saw that not only does this organization do great things for Jews around the world, but this organization does great things for non-Jews around the world. And that got me excited because we talk a lot about the chosen people. I don't like that term, the chosen people. It's a very negative one. I like the burdened people. We are burdened in setting an example, burdened to keep 613 mitzvahs, burdened to keep all the different things. If you want to change the world, start by changing yourself and doing by setting an example. I'm so impressed and inspired by everybody here together, and I heard this a few times, we actually can change the world. I believe our mission as Jews on this planet is to set the best example we can do. Treat other people the way they want to be treated. And as we build, we work, and we grow, and it's all about giving and sharing, take a moment, look around you. This is the team that's going to bring Tikkun Olam. This is how we're going to do it together. We have such a great gifts in our lineage and in our heritage. Share it with the world. Share it with the family. Thank you for having me, and enjoy the rest of your life.